installing exhaust on the 2018 V4. So the first thing we gotta do here, of course those are all the boxes of stuff right there that come with this. It's gonna be the carbon fiber fender. It's gonna be the exhaust itself, plus the uh, racing lowers that accommodate the new exhaust. So first thing we do, I have a few videos on it already, is we're gonna pull this off, gonna pull the side fairings off, gonna pull the mid fairings off, and we're gonna pull the lower fairings off. And the seat we're gonna pull off as well. And you can see right there, it says two, one there, one there. This thing slides up and there'll be a metal piece underneath. So I'll get all that stuff done real quick. All right, I'm about 20 minutes in. Got all the fairings off the bike that I need to get off. Got the seat off and I've already started taking off the tank itself. We've got the four bolts off of here. There's two bolts right here. So the next thing we gotta do is uh, direct towards the, I'll look at the directions and let you guys know. All right, so the next thing I did all in one assembly here was I pulled off the rear set. So it's just this bolt up here and this bolt down here. And I think that gives us enough room here to work with this exhaust right here. I don't think we actually have to move any of this, actually remove it like the instructions say. So I'm gonna try it, I'll let you know if it works. All right, next thing we're doing is we're pulling the heat shielding off. And it's just this piece right here. That's what it calls for to pull this heat shielding off. There's a metal piece underneath that we also pull off. Right now that the heat shielding is gone, you can see the exhaust is exposed. The next step it calls for is to remove the seat, which I've already done, and to remove the tank. So uh, we've already moved the bolts here. There's four here that have a metal piece that go across here. Now he's got to remove, there's one on the side here and one on the other side. And this whole, this whole tank will go to the side and we remove some uh, wiring that's actually on. I just I think I stepped on my old exhaust. Nice. <laughs> so we just remove some wiring and then we'll get to uh, the next step. So there's two lines here you have to remove. One is easy to remove, has an easy clip. This one is a horrible clip. And as you can see, it has to be moved down and out to even remove it. And then when you put it back together again, it just takes a pair of pliers and push it back together. But you gotta remove these first before you can turn the tank over. So the next step here is we gotta pull out a whole bunch of zip ties here um, to get to the subframe, because the subframe is coming off the bike. And you also have to remove two screws right out of here, these two things, and this whole assembly comes out of here. Just be very careful with it. So you have to remove the plastic piece from here. You just connect some of the, of the wiring harness lines, including the shock and everything. This is kind of how it should look. And then we got just got to pull out, there's the giant Torx bolts here from there, there, and there's ones that connect the subframe there and there, and this whole piece should be able to pull off the bike. So the subframe is now off the bike. Got it here on my hand. You can see the bike. And I was like that. Now we're only probably about an hour of work into this so far. Um, I thought this piece here that says, you know, um, this, uh, whatever the hell that says on it, um, it was the actual part of the engine. So when you're taking this off, just remove that and the whole thing just slides off. All right, the next step here is to pull out the exhaust valve motor. It's just four bolts. This whole module here pulls out and then the wiring harness disconnects from it. They want you to pull it off the bike because you're not gonna need any more for the uh, crop edge. All right, so after you pull out the exhaust valve, we're gonna have to remove this whole lower piece here. The instructions call for you removing a lot of little bolts and springs like this, and this manifold. Everything comes off now, for at least from the back part of the motor. So we're gonna do that right now. All right, so we're on day number two here. Um, 1.5 hours in so far. And uh, we've removed, obviously, the rear end of the uh, exhaust and the actual canister that goes underneath the bike. So that's all gone now. The next step is calling for us to remove what they label as a canister. I'm guessing this is the EVAP canister right here. So we're removing this out of the side. There's two little screws or uh, bolts that hold it in. So we're getting that out. It even comes with the rubber grommet and everything. Uh, follow the instructions. It'll tell you exactly how to disconnect it and disconnect the lines for it as well. All right, so we got the canister out of this section of the bike. This actually gives us a lot of room to work with the uh, header itself. Now, the canister will not go back onto the bike. Uh, that's just something you pull out and it stays out of the bike. Uh, I looked ahead in the instructions and saw it does not go back on the bike again. Um, so that will stay out. And now we got to move over to the other side for the ABS module. Um, that has to come out now for space, obviously. So we're working on getting that out right now. Just follow the instructions. It looks pretty simple. Just disconnect a whole bunch of stuff and remove a couple screws and the whole module comes out. All right, so we removed the ABS module um and we kind of just moved it to the side here and zip tied it to a couple of sensors now we're moving over here the instructions actually call for us to remove the front tire and the radiator and the oil cooler but we're going to try to work around it and see if we can do that without removing all this front stuff we're just going to try and give it a shot and if it works i'll let you guys know if it doesn't then it doesn't so basically we removed everything forward the oil cooler we moved down and now we're removing the actual uh, fans from the radiator we're still trying to make it work where 
you don't have to move the tire or disconnect the radiator or the oil cooler right now. Okay, the fans are removed. So now we're actually trying to just get the, uh, uh, the manifolds to come from the head right now. It looks like it may work, so I'll let you guys know. All right, so we've got the exhaust fully off the bike now. Um, and yeah, we were able to keep the front wheel on and keep the radiator support on and the oil cooler without draining any fluids whatsoever. We did, however, have to remove the fan assembly, um, which is a little bit of a pain, but not as much a pain as removing all that stuff. So now we've got everything off. Now we can start assembly of the actual um, exhaust, I believe. All right, so now we've assembled the entire exhaust using the instructions. It's real basic, real easy stuff. Uh, just if you follow along, it should fit all together perfectly. Um, we even fit the mufflers on. It all kind of fits the springs and a few bolts in the manifolds. There, you will need a lot of extensions and swivels, especially to get to some of the manifold bolts. Um, but it's looking pretty good right now. Managed to get the uh, rear set back on there. Got the pipe right back on there now. Manifolds all go up through there and back in through there. So now I'm working on the, uh, the tail. And you can see this piece is a new piece right there that kind of retrofits over the old piece. Um, and then we've got another metal piece that goes into that as well. And then uh, we're gonna be putting the tail right back onto the bike. I'll let you guys know if there's any issues. All right, subframe is mounted now. Just took four bolts. It's like a Torx down there, here, and there's one there and then one in there. They do have like a heat shield, you just kind of rest it on the exhaust and you kind of rest the whole subframe on top of it. And we're just tightening everything down now. So we're gonna make sure when you're doing this that uh, there's these washers that come in, like composite washers. They go between this piece, the subframe, and then there's a metal piece, a heat guard. Make sure you put it in between there because we forgot we just had to pull it back off and put these back in between there. And then another one goes on top of these things with the screw assembly. All right, now we got the subframe fitted. So now we're putting the heat shield on here by the rear set. So it starts with this uh, this metal piece here and then the um, carbon fiber piece goes on over it. Okay, so after you fitted the, uh, the carbon fiber piece there and um, they ask you to put, route the wiring through a rubber garment, uh, grommet right there. So just get all that done and then move on to the next step, which is, what is the next step? Let's find out. Um, all right. I think some stuff here the exhaust. All right, I'll let you know how that goes. It looks like a, some kind of zip tie or something like that. So zip tying and then moving wiring around and routing wiring. So I'll let you guys know how that goes. All right, so we got the wiring all routed here. That's basically what the instructions call for. They pretty much tell you how to wire it in the instructions. Like it has a diagram of how to wire it. So it's real easy, real simple. Next step is going to be, um, they say put the radiator back together, but it's already on here. So. Um, we're just going to secure everything and then route it as it calls for. That's the next step. And there wasn't any issues putting anything together, so we're 100% done. You can see the exhaust looks here. Love how this thing looks. Looks amazing. It was really easy just getting all the fairings back on. Um, the tank, there was just one thing you, did, you had to do differently, which was like Y off one of the lines, which all the equipment's provided for you in the kit. So really no worry there. Then all the fairings went back on, tank back on, uh, seat went back on, and she's all perfect. Love how it looks. Looks amazing. Okay, so I'm here, and what I have to do now is I have to take this bike over to Ducati to get the mapping. Oh, this thing doesn't focus very well, huh? Because you got a check engine light here. There's a warning light over there. So I'm gonna get take care of all this stuff, and hopefully just the flash does it all, and I'll let you guys know. Okay, so now I'm back from the Ducati dealership, and one thing I do notice when I start this thing up is the typical thing from Ducati here when they do their up maps. It'll say Racing Evo there at the side. Um, I didn't notice that before. And of course, the check engine lights is off and everything. So now I'll just give you a quick kind of listen because I gave you a listen of what it was before, and this is what it's like after. 